Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I just wanted to go over five things that I find are probably not lubricated very often. That's either through my experience with fixing and flipping small engines and doing a few, few customer machines, uh, lawn and garden stuff, or it's just stuff that I've recently learned I should have been lubricating that I didn't know about. I'll go over that stuff as we get through the video. So if you're like a master DIYer, you know everything, maybe there won't be anything new to you in here, but hopefully there will be. And maybe a few of these things won't even apply to you depending on the tools and equipment and items and things that you have. Maybe none of it will apply to you. Anyway, I don't want to introduce it too much more. Just know that any of the items that I talk about in this video can be found in the link in the description below from Amazon. If you find that it's something that should be in your shop to lubricate or help you lubricate something, uh, it's all down in the link in the description below. You'll help my little channel out if you buy from those links and it won't cost you anything extra. And more than anything, hopefully you just find some useful information in this video. So let's get to it. So as a lot of you guys know, I fix and flip a lot of uh, lawn and garden equipment. And on a lot of these old tractors, this is an old John Deere 111. Just about on not a single one of them have I ever seen a uh, good fresh grease put in the uh, spindles here on the front uh, end of the frame. There's just really hard grease. I did recently grease these, so there is a little bit of uh, good clean grease in them already. I more just filmed this just for the purpose of making the video. But uh, go ahead and hit those grease zerks up as often as you can find your user's manual tells you to. Or if it was me, I'd probably just do it every like four to eight hours of ride time of uh, mowing time. But if you find that your grease zerks are stuck or that the grease in your spindles is just too hard, go ahead and take just a propane torch and heat it up a little bit. It'll break up some of that hard grease and it should be able to take grease again after that. But yeah, guys, just remember there are some grease zerks on the front of your lawn and garden tractors. If you have one, this might not apply to a lot of people. Go ahead and hit them up with a little bit of grease to make them last a little bit longer. Throw some heat on there as well if uh, they just don't want to take any grease. I just use a general purpose grease here, and I'm sure general purpose grease will work just fine for you and any of your applications. So the second thing to lube or grease up is your trailer ball. This is just a little bit of simple trailer ball maintenance. It's not like this is absolutely necessary. You could get away with not lubricating your trailer ball ever, but uh, this is actually something I more recently learned about, and uh, I think it just seems like a good idea. It'll just kind of keep the noise down a little bit, probably keep your trailer hitch functioning a little bit better, uh, and it'll just keep your trailer ball from rusting away and make it just last a little bit longer, look a little bit nicer, you know. Not that I've ever really seen a trailer ball wear out, but what would it hurt to go ahead and just throw a little bit of general purpose grease on your trailer ball. I did take this old t-shirt to just kind of wipe away some of the excess. Uh, there's a good layer of grease still there. Maybe go ahead and do this just a couple of times a year. That's probably all you would really need to do. So this list isn't in any particular order, but this is basically just uh, showing you to take some chain and cable lube and go ahead and lubricate up uh, some of your cables and cable housing. So I've changed out in my lifetime, I don't know, quite a few throttle cables, engine brake cables, self-propelled transmission engagement cables, things like that. I've changed out quite a few of them on lawnmowers, dirt bikes, motorcycles. So you'll just take some chain and cable lube. Like I said, this is just the PB Blaster kind. Just shoot a little bit in the housing there and it'll help keep it from rusting. I've seen them just completely rust away, uh, but also it'll just help it run a little bit smoother. Put it in your throttle or uh, choke cables, your lawn and garden tractors, anything like that, and it'll help them last a little bit longer and make them a little bit easier to use. So this is an Oregon push and lube grease gun. It's for greasing your bar sprocket here. The sprocket that sits there on the front of the bar, there's that little grease port there that you can go ahead and shove that grease in. And the gun will just pump a little bit of grease in there to uh, keep that sprocket nice and lubricated, making the bar last a little bit longer. There is uh, another grease port here on the other side, as you can see, so I'll just shove a little more grease in there. It goes to the same place, so uh, all I did was just squeeze out more grease and had a little bit of a mess to clean up. Now, this is my Husqvarna bar. You can see that there's actually no grease port here on this one, so I thought, you know, why not just go ahead and throw a little bit of used mortar oil in there. I'm betting that with this bar and then also my steel, they're just expecting the uh, bar and chain oil to grease that sprocket up or to oil the sprocket to keep it from wearing too fast and that probably is enough but I figure what would it hurt you know I, I always keep on hang on to some used motor oil so why not just throw a little bit in there also I figured maybe why not just throw in some white lithium grease 
maybe that would be a good option just to make sure that you're actually uh, putting some little focus on keeping that sprocket nice and lubricated. Um, the other thing that I thought of was a syringe, but it didn't really work because it didn't have a small enough end. So the last little thing here on my list is when you're drilling into metal, it probably wouldn't hurt anything to just go ahead and lube up your uh, drill bit and the workpiece that you're drilling into. It makes your drill bits just last a lot longer. It makes the drilling go faster, I've found, and uh, just kind of keeps the little metal shavings in one place so they're easy to kind of wipe off and clean up, especially if you get enough in there. But if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you've probably seen me do this multiple times. These days I just use used motor oil. Here I was using some of that tap magic or whatever, which does work better than used motor oil, but I like using used motor oil just because it's free. Why not just use that for things like this? But basically you can just fill up a little oil can and uh, make your bits last a little bit longer by lubricating metal that you're drilling into. So I found this clip when I was looking for uh, me greasing the spindles on the Craftsman LT-1000 I recently fixed and flipped. And uh, I thought this would make just a good little bonus number six. A lot of your trailer jacks are going to have a little greaser to uh, grease the Acme threads there. I believe they're Acme probably on most of them because they're pretty big threads. But just uh, keep you know your trailer maintained, keep that jack working. Uh, probably just throw grease in it maybe once a year, you'd probably be good to go. So hopefully there's a little something in this video for everybody hopefully it wasn't a waste of anyone's time and you all pulled something out of it i know some of this stuff's pretty basic but it's just things that i've kind of noticed that people don't regularly uh, lubricate or grease or it's things that i just recently learned that feel kind of maybe a little bit more like secrets they're not exactly secrets but you know just things that people just don't regularly lubricate or grease because most people just don't know about it or whatever but anyway guys i appreciate you watching go ahead and leave a comment down below if you do any anything differently than I did here when you're lubricating or maintenancing any of these things I mentioned. Also, let me know if there's anything that you think uh, regularly needs lubrication or greasing or anything like that that uh, you think people skip over a lot. That's one thing I'd be interested to know. Basically, just let me know if you think something should have been on this list that isn't. But other than that, thanks for watching. If you did like this video and you got something out of it, please give me the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber already, please go ahead and click subscribe. I would really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.